come on let us magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together praise the Lord brothers and sisters then this is the day that the Lord has made we will rejoice and be glad this is Bible study again we have here our lesson this afternoon coming from 1st Samuel chapter 19 from verse 8 to verse 17 and we will use our text verse from Psalms 34 verse 1 saying many are the afflicted of the righteous but the Lord delivered them hold up their horn this is your uh, old Reverend Anderson humble servant coming to you from Trinity Christian Tabernacle 91 Elm Street Danbury Connecticut uh, now, brothers and sisters, before I go into lesson, I just want to breathe a word of prayer. Precious God, I thank you because you are worthy. I thank you because you care for us, sending your son to die to deliver us and to give us your word, which is your will for our lives, so we will understand. So it's important that we study your word. Bless those that are studying with me this afternoon. I pray that this lesson will be a blessing. In Jesus' name, amen. Second uh, Timothy 2 verse 15 is our uh, memory verse which said study to show thyself approved unto God a workman that needed not to be ashamed rightly divide the word of truth uh, I love to read the word of God when I read and study God's word God's word shine lights to the truth to who the Lord hears the word of God give knowledge, understanding to how evil sprang forth and how we are to apply the wisdom we receive from studying the word of God to encounter uh, and to bear fruit in his endeavor. The previous lesson subjects reveal that, that the children of Israel faces the Philistines. A standoff to the contest was on, and no one in Israel army at the time was confident enough to take on the challenger who was Goliath. However, the last son of Jesse, David, who came into the battle, decided that he would take the challenge, and therefore he took the challenge and went forth to meet the giant Goliath and was successful is in defeating the challengers. Brought honor, glory, and praise to the Lord. Now, according to 1 Samuel 18 from verse 6 through to 8, it said that when the woman of Israel, the women of Israel began singing praise to David and the men and King Saul could not stand to hear the people cheer more fervently for David than for him. He would not tolerate this type of disrespect and determine in his heart, hallelujah, Jesus, to put an end to it. So in the lesson, that's why it is important that we study the word of God, because some people ask the question, where sin comes from how does it appear and we were told in the scripture the only information that you and i can get how it comes about that satan uh, was envied and jealous and desired god's throne he thought about it it sprang from his thought of what he saw and there he seeks to advance here we see the same thing a standoff was here with the children of Israel. Saul was not strong enough nor confident to face Goliath. And the people under him were scattering everywhere, hiding. And God allowed David to come forth. David put his life on the line, brothers and sisters, and he went forth and take on the challenger. He defeated him. You know the story, the, the Bible clear that he cut off his neck, uh, uh, his head, and and as he was coming, the people were singing praise and glow. David was receiving some honor and respect. And as a king, Saul did not love that. So what come for jealousy <laughs> and sprang forth evil. So here you can see, brothers and sisters, that 
uh, as we observe the lesson, we'll see that evil sprang forth out of jealousy, disrespect. But the Bible said from Psalms 34, 19, that many are the afflicted of the righteous, but the Lord delivered them out of his, them all. Praise God. So here we see uh, the lesson said here that, and there was war again, and David went out and fought with the Philistine and slew them with a great slaughter, and they fled from him. And the evil spirit from Saul, uh, from the Lord was upon Saul as he sat in his house with his javel in his hand, and David played with his hand. So you see, the, the topic tonight will give us a lesson that Saul's attempts on David life. Saul's attempts on David life. Why this happened is because, as I said, David went out and, and bring honor to God. And the children of Israel were able to overcome the adversary, their enemy. And so Saul did not like when the people began to say, uh, uh, Saul kill a thousand. But David put 10,000 to fly. God of mother. When the Lord is with you and the anointing, God would magnify himself with you. And then you see where when God begin to use people who put their life on the line to die or to, uh, to fast and to pray or to study the word of God or to die flesh or to reach out for God, then some people who sit back and did, did not the what you call it, the work, uh, so that they could see God in a deeper depth. Then when God begin to use you, then many believers becomes jealous, you know. And here we see that it said that even though that David begin to do the things which is right and obey Saul, and, and then the, the, the scripture said that Saul began to inquire who David was, and then what they told, he took David into his own, uh, and gave him his, his his daughter, you know, and as David began to continue serve the purpose and serve the king, we see that the popularity, here we see here, it said that you know, David popularity, that, that's First Samuel 19.8, as last week lesson ended, David had defeated the giant Goliath and quickly rose to a prominence in Israel. Uh, Saul set him over the men of war, and he was accepted in the sight of all the people. Uh, bef be before long, however, Saul realized that David was no more popular than he was in the kingdom. <laughs> Praise God. Because of this, Saul became paranoid with regards to David, thinking the young man, the young commander was a threat to his throne. We see that in many eras, God Almighty, some people start out in ministry, they start out in an organization, uh, and, and then they begin to grow and God begin to use them mightily. And I've heard of a lot of situations where the person may can teach more than the pastor, can uh, can preach more than the pastor, people begin to like him, and, and, and then because of that, People begin to give him all the praise and the honor, and then he was not smart or she was not smart enough. What they do, they lift up themselves against the leader, and sometimes the leader get envy and jealous, and there is a split. And some go east, and some go west, and sometimes the ministry fall apart. But in this story, David submit himself and serve the king, and it's said there that it, it, uh, there was fight again. There was war again with the Philistine in verse 19.8. And 9 said, And David went out and, and fight and, and fought and slaught and, and slaughter, and they fled from him. And the evil spirit from the Lord was upon Saul as he sat in his house with his javel in his hand. And David played with his hand. And Saul sought to smite David even to the war with the javel, but it slipped away out of Saul's present. Uh, you know, David slipped away out of Saul's present, and he smote the javel into the wall, and David fled and escaped that night. 
Now, verse 11 says, And Saul also sent messengers unto David house to watch him and to, and to slay him in the morning. And, and Michael, you know, his daughter, uh, Michelle's daughter, uh, wife told him, saying, If thou save not thy life tonight, tomorrow thou shalt be slain. So we find that, that Saul was against David because he feared that David would be uh, advanced to the throne. But yes, he would, but in God's time. So because Saul failed God and God chose David, God began to use David and David began to humble himself before the Lord. You know, he becomes popular, and here evil sprang forth because of the soul realized that he could not face the challenge. David faced the challenge. People begin to see his, him as a leader, see him as one who will defend them. Then Saul realized that his popularity was diminishing, and so he became angry and seek the life of David. But this is where David in Psalms 34 19, after understanding how God delivered him, he allowed us reading what he has uh, written, you know, in the Word of God. It said, Many are the affliction of the righteous, but the Lord delivered him out of them all. You see, David faces so much stuff. But God was there to deliver David. And you, brothers and sisters, maybe watching me are facing the same thing. There are incidents in your life, in the church, in your job, you know, wherever you find yourself where it was only you, God, give the, 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 the formula or this tragedy. Everybody was fearful. And you went out knowing that you could have died, but you take chance because faith is stepping out uh, not knowing what the result is but you just believe god that god is with you and so you walk by faith and when the victory comes people put you aside and they believe you becomes a threat and because they want the glory then they seek your life sometimes you have to run you have to run for your life amen god was with david and god is with you listen that's why it's important that we study the word of god because i found out as i read the word of god it allow me to understand that even though people are against you you have to display the love of god so that's why you have to be uh, anointed receive the power of god so when we look into the lesson it said that uh, you see that by this time it said that yeah, by this time, that Psalms 19, uh, 1 Samuel 19, 11 to 17, give us uh, a, in, a clear uh, indication that by this time, David had married Saul's daughter, Michelle. Saul sent messenger to David's house, perhaps in the hope that his daughter would help him kill David. But the daughter and Jonathan liked David, uh, and they were devoted to saving David's life. And, and refused to be obedient to Saul's order. And because of that, Saul began to say to his daughter, I thought you would uh, obey your father. But, but you have to understand, uh, David was, uh, was her husband. And she had to protect because they understood that David went out uh, to fight to save them. And it said that Jonathan uh, becomes... In one with David, they, they both make an agreement, uh, a covenant between the two of them. And so whatever Saul seeks, to, uh, there was an help on the inside. That's what we have, the advantage over the enemy, the Holy Spirit. And then the Bible said, the secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. So brothers and sisters, if, if you read and understand the word of God, it shows you that even in the house of Saul, when he wanted to destroy David, those who he thought he could use, they were the one who were giving David the information. Because when God is with you, God will use anybody. God knows how to get to you. Moreover, God gave us the Holy Spirit. And the word of God said, the secret 
of the Lord is with them that fear him. And he will show you uh, the things that he desire for you to know that you may be able to overcome the wiles of the devil. So Saul could not overthrow David because David was just growing in popularity. Uh, Saul was jealousy and increase and he could not stand to see David receive all this accomplishment and this great honor and it made him mad. We are in a world today just like that. People just want power. People want to take the stand. They want everything. But we as children of God got to humble ourselves and trust God. Because God is able to bring us through, brothers and sisters. Sometimes your people attempt after your life. is the spirit of the enemy who seeks to kill, steal, and destroy. Oh, but God is a way maker. Jesus always made the way is dear. And that's why David said, many uh, are the affliction of the righteous. But the Lord, but your God, but Jesus Christ, deliver Lord of them all. David passed through the fire. When you read this, the, the, uh, the, the writing, the information uh, concerning David's life and how Saul sought after him in caves and, and many places and David got the opportunity, maybe we'll see it going down in the next lesson, uh, where David did not touch him because he realized that in spite that he sought his life, he is the Lord's anointed. That's why, brothers and sisters, we have to study the Word of God. Because you know what? If we don't understand the Word of God and somebody seeks our lives and we got the advantage over him, without God's help, we will touch him. Without God's help, we will seek to destroy him. And we would not be obedient to God because let God uh, fight our battle. So without the Word of God, we will not do that which is right. That's why I don't understand why some people don't want to study the Word of God. I don't why, understand why some people don't want to enjoy the Word of God. I enjoy it when I read it because I see the Word of God is a map that would help me on. Praise God. And so when we look at Saul's attempts on David's life, here we look on the, the aim of the lesson to give us a clear indication that to understand that jealousy uh, uh, people are also unhappy and angry people. They are angry people. So listen to me. When people are unhappy and jealous over what you got and angry, you got to stay out of their reach. You got to run for the life because they will do anything to get you down. They will, they will move mountain to bring you down, brothers and sisters. But God is with you. Amen. Praise God. Amen. The principal said to see that jealousy is a destructive fire that always seek satisfaction but never find it. Because with Saul, King Saul, he was jealous, he was angry, maybe he couldn't sleep at night because he fear of something that he couldn't keep. Because God was in control and so he saw it, so he was angry. It was like a fire burning within him. You know, and that's why some people even leave the church. Or when I mean leave the church, leave it the ministry or leave wherever because sometimes they're so jealous over other people's position, other people's gift, or whatever people have. Uh, but we are to be content with what we have and, and make sure, brothers and sisters, that we know our calling and, and humble ourselves because uh, our pastor always said, you know, uh, what God has for you, and I love that song, it is for you, uh, you know, and no one can take what God has for you if you humble yourself before the Lord. When we look on uh, the application, it said that to be content with what God has given you, you see, I run before the time, and to trust him for the things we need in the future. We want to, you see, if you look on the lesson, brothers and sisters, remember, Saul was a king. He had many mighty men. But when the challenge came forth, he was fearful. He never wanted to die. 
but a little boy or man named David was under the anointing of God. The anointing was upon him. He went forth and he fought. What you think should have happened? Saul and the Israelites and the, those people should be so happy. Saul should be worshipping David, not as God. Honor and respect him. Yes, he gave him his daughter and, and the promise that he, he, he promised that the one who killed the, the giant would receive. But then something began to spring up within him. He began to hear people talk much about David and about what he did. And he began to say to himself, so what about me? He, people just keep talking about David, but not him. And he was angry. <laughs> he was jealous. And, and, and then he seemed to do to kill the man who was there fighting in many battles to save Israel. Oh my God, that tells you what sin will do to you. Mm. But David understand that he had to humble himself before God. You see, brothers and sisters, uh, we see that, you know, Saul was furious with, with his daughter and could not believe that his own daughter had deceived him. He was so sick with jealousy that he actually thought that other people ought to hate David as much as he did. What a man. When you are possessed, when you are or when you lost the track, lost the spiritually uh, direction. The Bible said that he was furious. He, he, he was so upset. He, he want others to see what he see. Isn't that what we have today in our world, in our leadership? Sometimes they lost track and they are trying to bring everybody and they are desperate. They are jealous, they are angry, brothers and sisters. You got to run for your life. Who should you run to? Jesus Christ. David ran. And as he ran, God sought out, amen, Jonathan and his wife. And they were able to protect him. They were the messengers giving him the news that was coming from Saul. So the sadness part of this account is that Saul considered David to be his enemy. David had done nothing to deserve or vindicate such a suspicious suspicion. Saul should have been looking for ways to promote David, not to kill him. <laughs> Oh, Lord Jesus. Brothers, you see that? But Saul was, was only interested in his own prestige and could not stand for anyone else to receive applause. Do you see we have anything like that in our world today? Just me and myself. If Jesus had thought of that, if God had thought about himself alone, where would we be today? Jesus, David is just a man of God own art who went out to fight. Jesus came down, fought with the enemy, won the victory, and gave us the opportunity to have life. So we see, brothers and sisters, that it is important that we trust God because as we look here, we see that uh, so, and my, Michel took an image and laid it in his bed when Saul sent messengers to find it and put a pillar of coat here for the boisterers and cover it with a cloth. And when Saul sent messengers to take David, she said he is sick. That is First Samuel 19, 8, 13 and 14. And Saul sent the messengers again to see David, saying, bring him out. Bring him up to me in the bed that I may slay him. Oh, God, I love it. You see, the man was so desperate, brother. That's what the devil is. He's desperate. He comes to steal, kill, destroy. He's like a rolling lion. He's desperate. And, 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 and he don't love you. Because, look, even when the message received to the king saying that he's, he's laying in the bed, even though it was a trap, it was a trick that the wife uh, played to secure David, but David was sent out and they just wrapped up just like a doll or anything there in the bed 
and 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 then the servant went back to say to Saul that David is sick in the bed. Saul said in verse thirteen. In verse one, Saul sent to the messenger, "Take David." She said, "He is sick." And Saul sent the messenger, said, saying, "Bring him unto me in the bed that I may slay him." He no care. He no matter what or where he was or what the position, he was interested to kill him. Amen. And when the messenger were coming, behold, there was an image in the bed with a pillar of cold coat's ear for his buster. And Saul said unto his daughter, Why art thou deliver me, deceive me so, and sent away mine enemy, that he escaped? And his, and his daughter answered, said unto him, Let me go, why should I kill thee? So, it's, it's just amazing. The, the, the king want his very daughter to kill his son-in-law, her husband. And because she stood up to fight him, this, the king was so angry with his daughter. He, he said David was an enemy. David never seek to kill him. David went to kill the enemy who was against him, the king, and the children of Israel, and bring glory to God. And he saw David as an enemy. But I'm so glad, brothers and sisters, that David held to his integrity. Amen, David held to his integrity. Amen, and David will stand up there, man, and, and, and won the battle, you know, over the enemy, brothers and sisters. Amen, so maliciousness, uh, we now discover something else about King Saul that helps understand why he ate David. Saul was afflicted by an evil spirit, you see, and this was not the first time he had been so afflicted. We know that this evil spirit was the inspiration behind Saul's murderous intention towards David. While David was playing uh, with the harp and the Saul sought to, to, to kill him. But it's because of the evil spirit. When, when you allow the evil spirit to take over your life, then the enemy will use you. But God has given us the spirit of love, power, and of a sound mind. Brothers and sisters, the lesson is only to show us that uh, that even those people attempt on your life, uh, but it let us know uh, here in Psalms 34, 19, many are the afflicted of the righteous, but the Lord will deliver you out of them all. I hope tonight that this lesson will show you that no matter what people do, God will protect you. Amen. Just Hold faith in God and trust God, for he never fails. Precious God, I just thank you because your lesson tonight helped us to understand that God is with us. And the, the, the explanation of David, the life of David, give us a clear indication that you will protect us. Bless your people as they seek to continue study your word. God help them. Help us all. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise God.